I started out by looking at some reference art for inspiration. The Praetorian Guard were created for the 1997 Games Day convention in the United Kingdom, in which they featured in a diorama called The Massacre at Big Tooth River, in which the Praetorian Guard and Talarn Desert Fighters fought a desperate last stand against an advancing orc Wa at the mouth of the Big Tooth River, and the Imperial Defenders did not come out on top in this engagement. Thankfully for the Praetorian Guard, they proved quite popular with the public and soon had their own line of models. Unfortunately, that line seems to have performed below expectations, and the Praetorian Guard kits were discontinued in 2001. I began with a set of starch pants from the Praeto Legionnaire Firing Squad kit. Combining this with a dress shirt from the same kit gave him a suitably imperious and classy look, befitting that of the Praetorian Guard. I went and grabbed an arm with an overslung las gun from the Galaxy Core kit. I then mirrored it to make sure it would fit on the right side of the model, as I still planned to have the cane on the right hand side with the weapon on the left. The arms still had these strange protruding rivets coming out of the shoulder pad, which aren't present on any of the Praetorian Guard artwork, neither the Cadian kits. What I did was I selected by faces so that I could then separate by selected in Blender's edit mode. Once I had done this, I went in, selected the whole model in edit mode, and then used set separate by loose parts in order to separate both the area around the rivet and the rivet itself, which was now hanging free. I then moved both of them out of the affected area and used edge select to select the area around where the rivet had been, then pressed F to fill that in. I repeated that trick for the rest of the rivets on the gun and then test fit the weapon against the body. I wanted to have a nice, natural fit in a semi-relaxed pose while making sure that the bottom of the sling didn't clip into his pants. I delved back into the Prato Legionnaire kit and found a head with a suitably imperious sneer that would serve as a good one for this model. It also has a wonderful little breathing tube or vaporization drinker thingy that really grounds him within the universe of the 41st millennium, especially the area at Big Tooth River, which seems very dry and arid. I spent the next couple of minutes making sure the head fit right without clipping too far into the model. For the model's backpack, I went to the Galaxy Militarum Megapack and selected a suitable candidate. I made sure it sat upright and flush on the back without intersecting with too much. Unfortunately, the way I had positioned the las gun meant that it was going to clip into the canteen and pouch on the left side of the backpack, so using Blender's bisect tool in edit mode, I separated them away using separate by loose parts, and then edge selected to fill in the areas where they had left holes in the model. Rigging seems intimidating at first, but is actually really simple with Blender. Using an arm from the Galaxy Militarum Mega Pack, I inserted single bones and used edit mode to extrude them and form the basis of the arm, stopping at the hand, as that requires more precise detail. When rigging hands, I always start with one base point in the center of the palm, that then splits into four at the beginning of each of the fingers. In this case, I'm not using the thumb, as I don't think it's going to be necessary for the pose I intend to make. For the fingers themselves, I only make two joints. In this case, I'm treating the intermediate and distal phalanges as one piece. This is mostly to save time and because altering these would be so minute that the effect it would have on the final product would be almost negligible. Once the armature was completed, I deformed it using automatic weights to apply it to the arm. I then spent an ungodly amount of time posing it to make sure it worked so the footage of that is not going to be shown for the sake of time. Once that was done, I attached the arm to the body and made sure it sat flush and didn't overlap too many parts and didn't have any gaps or holes that will mess us up during printing. I built the cane from scratch using a cylinder in Blender and the edit mode. My plan was to make something similar to this diagram, but without an eyelet or a wrist cord and with a circular handle. It took a little bit of tweaking but at the end of the day, I think the cane turned out pretty posh. Once the cane was finished, I added it to the model in the palm of his right hand. 
It took some tweaking to get a correct fit for it, trying to get a nice natural motion where the palm is actually wrapped around the cane and not just intersecting it, but I think I got there in the end. To make the base, I took a 25mm base I'd found on Thingiverse and added this rocky topper to it. I truly don't remember who made this rocky topper, and I've misfiled it somehow, so if this is yours, please contact me and I'll put credit in the video description. I then scaled them to make them match one another, and used edit mode and the bisect tool to cut the bottom off the topper and have it fit more naturally onto the 25mm base. To finish the base, I used a really neat trick. I joined all of the parts of the model that touched the base into one, and then added a Boolean difference modifier to the base topper that intersected them. Once I'd done this, I set the solver to fast, and solved it using that single object made of everything that touches the base. When you do this, you create a small cut in the base that leaves a little imprint for the model to sit in when you glue it. This is really, really nice for resin models, and as you can see, it gives you a guideline for where to glue when you put your model back on. Remember to give your freshly printed parts time in the sun for some rest and relaxation. And just like that, our Praetorian Guardsman is complete. I think he turned out wonderfully with a great contrast from the dark, drab, arid base to his bright British Imperial color uniform. Well, that's all for now. I'd very much appreciate suggestions for the type of conversions you'd like to see me do next, and remember that I don't get to do any of this cool stuff without the support of people like you on YouTube keeping me going. So, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your time.